All right, freaks, welcome. We are going over episode four of American Horror Story season six titled, That's Roanoke. Now, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't watch this video. Mama gonna give you Episode is written by John J. Gray and directed by Marita Gra uh, Grabiak. This is, seems like the first time I've seen Marita's name as far as a director, so it's nice to see some new blood. Now, um, real quick, huge happy birthday to our admin, Casey Soper. Please join me in the comments and wish Kat, uh, Casey a very happy birthday. Now, this is the short description, guys. If you would like the long description and Mother Supreme's thoughts, move down to the number right here and you'll get the long description. So, to make a long story short, Matt, of course, gave Shelby the I had no idea I was doing it reason for why he was doing what he was doing with Lady Gaga's character. <laughs> Shelby doesn't believe it at first, she's really mad, and he breaks down and tells her, really and truly, I really didn't do it on purpose I have no memory so she believes him she goes to take a shower Pigman surfaces finally the pig man comes out and terrorizes Matt and Shelby and we get a look at Dennis O'Hare's character when he comes up and makes the pig disappear when he says Croatoan yes we finally get Dennis O'Hare's character Dennis tells us uh, basically the history of the house and it is important that Lee is missing through the entire episode he tells us basically everybody who owns the house ends up missing or dead. He goes through the people who have actually owned the house as well as the nurses. We find out that the two nurses who were murdering their patients to spell out the word murder, uh, they actually were murdered by the Roanoke spirits, the butcher in her colony. Thought that was a pretty cool little ending, which it was surprising. I honestly thought maybe they had joined the Roanoke colony. So anyway. Um, Basically, Dennis explains that six days leading up to the blood moon, which all of you should know what this is. We had one, like, I think it was almost about a month ago. Uh, spirits can kill you. So the Native Americans call this the dying grass moon, which the spirits of Roanoke, or in every spirit, I guess, follows. Um, first quarter moon rises then. They needed to leave that night. Shelby dealt Elias, and he says, I'll take you to Priscilla and Flora which he does, he takes them and you see Priscilla and Flora and a whole bunch of other of the spirits. However, before they can extract Flora from the spirits and get her safely uh, away from them, um, it looks like Native Americans come out, shoot Elias in the chest with arrows and we don't see him die, but you get the impression that he does. Matt and Shelby take off as if their asses were on fire. Flora's left behind, they get back to the house, Cricket's there. And lets them know look you really did try to leave you didn't the butcher doesn't want any more um bartering because the blood moon's coming and she can kill you guys regardless if you know you're here or not so she uh she gives cricket a, a warning for them to leave then it comes down to it uh we get a little bit more of thomason's backstory how she killed her colony she basically went like Dandy Mott freak show on them and killed all of them when she came back from banishment, uh, which was a freak show connection there. We also found out that the person who built the house was a Mott. That's another freak show connection. And uh, Cricket is getting ready to um, banish all the spirits and get Flora back when, as soon as he's leaving, Flora runs out in front of the taxi, Cricket runs off after her, the spirits catch him. It's nighttime, they show up at the farmhouse. Flora manages to escape, but Cricket is, de -kill is killed in a disemboweled uh, like procedure. And it was really gross and that rumor obviously was true. And the episode basically ends with um, Kathy Bates like, you know, showing her, her meat cleaver to uh, Shelby and Matt saying that they're next. So that's the short one, okay? Let's go into the long description very quickly. 
Matt basically has no memory of having sex with Lady Gaga, and Shelby's really pissed about that. Obviously, she's really pissed, but she keeps bringing up the fact that Matt and Lee were, went against her back to burn the house down without her, which again, Shelby's throwing a big stink about the house burning down. Why is she so afraid of that? Is there something in the house that she doesn't want to be destroyed, or is she like that afraid of fire? I have no idea. That was just something that really stood out to me. Um, Shelby does tell, though, her husband that she believes him, that he didn't do it on purpose and he has no memory of it. She goes to take a shower and the pig man emerges from the shower, sort of like in Murder House. Now, Matt, <clears throat> excuse me, finally sees the pig man. They both run from it and Dennis O'Hare comes to save the day. Finally, <laughs> he shouts Croatoan at the pig man and he disappears. Now, Dennis explains to Matt and Shelby the history of the house. And guys, Lee is missing through this whole episode. Angela Bassett is not in it once. Dennis says Croatoan is a word of dark power and blood magic. Dennis lived in the house six months and is still currently the owner. However, everyone who owns the house ends up missing or dead. Dennis bought the house so others would not make the same mistake and fall under it's uh, same prey. Property taxes made it possible for Matt and Shelby to buy the house. When Elias could not pay the property taxes, it was auctioned off. Matt is pissed and, think, and tries to kick Elias out of the house. And Dennis shows them more files that's kept in the basement that he's had surrounding the house. Elias obviously said too that there would be a book someday and I wonder if there is gonna be one. But basically, guys, in 1973, the Chen family moved in. They immigrated from Taiwan, and they were murdered by the butcher and her crew. The house was completed, built, in, 1970, in 1792 by Edward Philippe Mott, the first person to disappear from the house. We also find out the murdering nurses were killed by Thomason as well, and it seems that Elias was in the woods when the nurses came to him and told him the story of Kathy Bates and her crew killing them. The nurses were warned to leave, but they did not. So they were killed so their blood could purify the land and enrich the soil. So October 3rd, 19, uh, 1952, three hunters are staying in the house and something made them kill each other. October 19th, 1973, the Chens are missing. October 29th, 1989, the sisters abandoned the house. And the sisters, I do apologize, I meant the two nurses that were killing their patients to complete the word murder. I wonder though what happens between 1792 and 1952. What happens between those years? I mean, is, is there just literally nobody living there? But the Native Americans basically call what is happening right now as the dying grass moon. Basically six days leading up to the, blue moon, to the blood moon. And you guys should know what a blood moon is because we had one just recently actually in real life. Uh, six days leading up to the blood moon, spirits can kill you. The first quarter moon rose that night, so they needed to leave. Now, Shelby does doubt Elias, and I think that this is important because she thinks that Elias is doing this to get the house back. But yet when Cricket came in the previous episode, she didn't doubt him for one minute that he knew things, that, he, that his abilities were true, where Matt and Lee thought that Cricket was a fraud. So why did Shelby have no problem being convinced that Cricket was a psychic, but she has every single problem being convinced of Dennis O'Hare's story when he actually has newspapers and facts to back it up? Just as a question for you guys to chew on. But Elias takes Matt and Shelby to go get Flora because that night, remember, once the moon rises, it's the first night of the beginning of the six days of this blood moon. Now, Elias says that victims of the butcher are bound to the land for some unknown reason. And at this point, Matt believes Elias, but Shelby still doesn't. Um, they see Gaga, Lady Gaga in the woods. She's all looking sexy and dirty. Shelby totally runs off after Gaga in anger. Uh, she totally abandons the attempt to get Flora, which is weird. I mean, I guess I kind of don't blame her, but your niece is a lot more important and you really need to have your head on your shoulders. Keep your head in the game, Shelby. Come on now. Don't, don't let shit like that hold you back. L let's think about Flora here. Um, Shelby, when she runs after Gaga, she ends up meeting the ghost of the three hunters. And she says the word Croatoan and it doesn't work because the moon, I guess, is starting 
to rise and the sun is starting to go down, even though it's pretty sunny that day. I... Anyway, th the point of the matter here is that Croatoan didn't work. Um, so they find Flora playing with the pig band, the two nurses, Priscilla and the Chen family. And there's a couple of kids that I could not make out. I don't know if they were the daughters of the Chen family or if they were somebody else. It was just too hard to see. The horn blows loud, a horn from somewhere, and it distracts everybody. And unfortunately, it distracts everybody from seeing that there's some people in the woods with bows and arrows. They shoot him at Elias. It goes into his chest and he falls down. We don't get confirmation that Elias is dead. Unfortunately, the Indians, like the Native Americans, that's what I thought they were. They break into the clearing. All of the spirits scatter. And Matt and Shelby are so fearful that they scatter as well. They totally take off and they leave Elias there. You see him there and bloody. His eyes are still open and look like he was still breathing, but you never get confirmation that he's actually dead. Um, this causes uh, Matt and Shelby to flee the forest without Flora, unfortunately. When they make it back to the farmhouse, Cricket is waiting for them. He basically tells them that the butcher is pissed that they haven't left yet. And at this point, Shelby says that they will do anything to get Flora back. Which, which I have to say, Shelby, shut your freaking mouth. You just made a huge deal about burning the house down to save Flora. And now you want to talk about doing anything to save her? I mean, come on guys, I don't trust Shelby in any way, shape, or form. And I totally feel that there is something up with her big time. Now, Cricket said that he went back to the butcher to ask for more time, but she refused to give it. So they've got to leave. Cricket tells them as well that he's going to go out and try to talk to the butcher again, but he goes out and he actually sees Lady Gaga. He calls her the bitch with the real power, which I love that. We find out Lady Gaga's character's name is Scathich, S-C-A-T-H-A-C-H. -A -A uh, her power grows with each phase of the moon, as does her lady needs. So Cricket offers Matt as like a piece of meat to like satisfy her so that they don't, so, you know, Kathy and her crew don't kill Matt and Shelby. <laughs> anyway, um, Lady uh, Scathich shows Cricket sort of a little bit of her backstory. Um, the house and land is the true site supposedly of the colony of Roanoke and the colonists were living it up high on the hog. However, there was a price to pay for all of its bliss. Thomason killed Priscilla as a human sacrifice to appease Scathich. Then Ambrose, don't forget, that's Wes Bentley, he accused Scathich of being a witch and his mother of like being in cahoots with the devil. So Ambrose says that the people are leaving for the shore to wait for John to return for them. So Scathich convinces Thomason to um, give her colony discipline. I guess it's the best way to say it. And uh, release the power of the blue moon, making of uh, the blood moon, excuse me, I keep saying blue moon, I apologize. Making her colony her servants for all of eternity. So Thomason poisons this fruit and gives it to her people. And then she totally goes dandy mott on them. And I mean, she literally kills every single member of her colony, even her own kid. Then she takes her hatchet and freaking cuts them up afterwards. I mean, it was pretty brutal scene, guys, I have to say. Um, so we get another freak show connection in this scene when Kathy goes crazy and she kills her whole colony, similar to how Dandy killed all of the freaks in Freak Show. So basically, Scathich uh, cuts Lady Gaga's throat. Uh, Kat, uh, Thomason lets Scathich cut her throat. It was an offer so great that the blood concentrated the ground, sealing all of their souls into the land. Now, Cricket says that he has a spell that will take care of Scathich and the, but and the butcher and get them back Flora. But he needs to go back to his hotel to get it. And uh, Cricket takes off in his Uber. <laughs> now, guys, this was a great moment. Um, Cricket asks his driver if he's ever heard of the term gay for pay. <laughs> anyway, while the audience is laughing, Flora runs out in front of the taxi. And Cricket, the taxi stops, Cricket gets out and runs after her. So we get the scene next where it's nighttime. Matt and Shelby are worried that Cricket hasn't returned. 
The sun has gone down and Matt hears something outside and goes to investigate. As usual, take a shot, guys. He goes, he's led to like Elias's underground bunker and finds Scathich. She's got the candles lit and you know, she's ready to sex Matt up with her dirty teeth and her dirty armpits. I mean, she's ready to go. And she says to Matt, which I find interesting, that debts must be paid. And I wonder whose debt needs to be paid? It, is he talking about for when, is she talking about for when Cricket offered Matt before this? Or is she talking about somebody else's debt, like Shelby or Lee's debt? Is there something going on here that we don't know about in regards to a debt? Anyway, uh, Matt says that her words rushed through him through her touch. And this is what I was talking about in Lady Gaga's song. He didn't need eyes to see her backstory. Basically, Scathich was an English girl. She was a descendant of the Druids. Um, she left English, England on a boat, and the men on the boat blamed Scathich for the, bit, for the bad things that occurred on the boat. Uh, it's just bad luck men feel to have a woman on board. So as punishment, they decided to burn her at the stake. But she killed them first to satisfy like her ancient gods. So Scathich basically escaped into the wild and was made, it kind of like evolved into something more. We get the producers asking questions again, which this is a really great point again, guys. It does sound like Matt Boomer, but my instinct is to say that it's Cheyenne Jackson asking the questions. But again, we get the producers interfering with the show. And uh, Matt says that Scathage wanted him, Matt, to actually come and join her in the woods. And he said that he would have, which I thought was also very interesting. At this point, Shelby wakes up and she sees Thomason outside of her house with her crew. She screams for Matt, which if you guys have been on Twitter lately, that's kind of like been a meme lately. In every episode of American Horror Story, somebody goes, Matt! <laughs> it's so hilarious. So anyway, um, when Matt hears his wife calling for him, he uh, gets himself out of Gaga and uh, goes running for her. Thomason has Flora and she's ready to kill her, but Priscilla intercedes and helps Flora escape. And instead of killing Flora, the colonists kill Cricket in this horrible, disgusting, disemboweling scene. And I guess that that rumor that went around on the internet about a disemboweling scene ended up being true. Um, but the colonists do kill Cricket, unfortunately. And guys, we get, we get to talk to, at that point, Rhett Snow, who was the Uber driver. Why do we get his interview? His name matches Myrtle Snow from Coven. We know that Myrtle did not have children. However, Myrtle did have, I believe she said a brother. I'm not sure. I need to go back and watch Coven at that point. Maybe if you guys know, maybe you could put it into the comments for me. But I do believe that this Rhett is somehow related to Myrtle. We get his interview. He was just simply an Uber driver. Why didn't we get the police officers? Why did we get any sort of crime scene data technician interviews? Why haven't we gotten anything like that? Why all of a sudden just get Rhett Snow, the Uber driver's interview? And it was literally just for two, just for a few seconds. What was the point of that? There obviously was a point to it. <laughs> so, I mean, what sort of pay, uh, driver drives off without getting paid? I mean, it just, that part just didn't make sense. And I wanted to point it out to you guys. Uh, Cricket's death scene was pretty gruesome. So if you guys want to go back and watch it, um, I guess so, but it was pretty gruesome. It was pretty, pretty, that was, it was, those was great effects, I should say. Anyway, uh, Kathy points her meat cleaver at Matt and Shelby, basically indicating to them that they are next to die. And the episode closes. Now guys, my one-liner award definitely goes to Cricket for his two sentences. First one when he says, honestly, I'd murder for a Coke Zero. Second one is when he says, tell me, young man. Have you ever heard of the term gay for pay? Cricket definitely won my one-liner award. Congratulations, Cricket. Well, guys, that is it for the video and my review. Don't forget to check out my video where I go over Is Shelby a Witch? And my video, Did Lady Gaga song Perfect Illusion give away the, the uh, episode six twist? I will be posting a part two 
to the Shelby is a Witch video soon, so look out for that. Uh, go check out my channel and don't forget to subscribe and show me some love if you liked the video by clicking the like button. Uh, Beyond the Horror is back on Wednesday live as well as Ash vs. Evil Dead every Sunday. And guys, this is again, this is Mother Supreme wishing you all a very wonderful night and I hope everybody has an evil day. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm.